YouTube Oz it going the goat house is back with some more maybe a little early 2020 NFL season predictions uh, this video for the NFC playoffs we now have seven teams per conference so post free agency evaluating these teams I'm gonna take a look at what the seven teams may look like did this video for AFC and recently before both of these I did division by division placement predictions so I would recommend watching those videos first for the AFC and the NFC we'll be live during the NFL draft April 23rd right here instant predictions reactions grades we're gonna break it all down hopefully you can join us uh, and then we're going to have some live streams leading up to the NFL draft, of course, uh, Q&As, and taking a look at maybe some viewer mock drafts through the chat there. It'll be pretty cool. Uh, two channels here, 50K subscriber goal by the draft. Please help us out. Twitter's a must-follow. Fan-voted mock draft going on, the, going on right now on the Twitter. You guys vote. We'll make a video on what you guys decided for each pick in the first round. Uh, any link you need will be in the description comments. Please help us out by following us everywhere. Uh, podcast, six episodes out. Links down below, Apple and Spotify. NFC, seven playoff teams. It's going to be super weird. Again, did this for AFC uh, teams as well and picked seven teams. And uh, now we're going to do it for the NFC. We're going to reveal them one by one here. And coming in at the one seed for me is... The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and there's a lot of people, there's a lot of salty people out there that Tom Brady, they, they just, I guess they can't get it through that Tom Brady went to the Bucs, but, and there's also people saying like you're overreacting or telling other people they're overreacting because Tom Brady went to the Bucs. I explained multiple times. I think people just skim through the videos, look at the graphics. That's okay. At least you're here. But I've told people multiple times it's not just Tom Brady. I mean, Tom Brady does make a significant difference, as he should. Everyone should know that. Uh, but Bruce Arians, second year, um, you know, Chris Godwin getting better, and now he might have just got better just, just because of his, who his quarterback is. Mike Evans, same thing, top-tier receiver in the NFL. Those two tight ends just got better. Uh, but looking at the defense, I think the defense might be the most underrated thing in football, uh, mainly the secondary. They could get better at safety. I like the corners a lot. They're, you know, they're, they're good, young athletic corners fit today's NFL they're going to continue to get better they got a lot better last year the front seven's ridiculous top tier run stopping ability that 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 linebacker unit in a 3-4 is top top tier top tier for sure uh the pass rush but mainly the inside linebackers Levante David De Devin White I mean those those guys that just get you excited about the game you know they're just so good in every aspect of the game and they're going to continue to get better especially Devin White it's a really good team everywhere you know they they're going to add another running back in the draft they're going to add another offense lineman in the draft but it's a, it's a well put together team that's going to continue to get better that's why they're the one seed it's not because of just one player um yeah people are going to rip me for it i guess but I, I just don't see why you know you just evaluate the team that's what you get the two seeds going to be the eagles eagles do have a few holes to fill still uh receiver position um, you know, in the linebacker mainly, they could get, they need another running back, but it's not top tier need, uh, but they do need another running back to pair with Sanders, um, you know, and they could use, they could use help at safety. Uh, they're not going to be dying to get that, but the Eagles, it's going to be, it's going to be an explosive, it's going to be an explosive team. I think Carson Wentz takes a step up this year. Um, you know, struggled here and there last year. I know his receivers didn't help him. Uh, started to pick it up at the end of the season. I, I think he really steps it back up this year. I haven't been honestly. I haven't been super thrilled with Carson Wentz's play. Expected a little more, especially after that MVP type season. I guess getting hurt knocks that back a little bit. But I think this is the year. Uh, I think this is the kind of the year. I think people were a little early last year saying that that front, that defensive front, is going to be the best in the NFL. I would say not so fast. I think this year it's going to be up there. Adding Javon Hargrave. Um, you know him himself. He's a he's a very solid player, but him himself isn't really what makes it. You know, I guess what he's able to do, able to actually get a true nose tackle, um, you know, helps just the rest of the defensive front in general. Uh, and then adding that proven corner, finally adding a, a solid corner in there. Enough messing around with these average, mediocre corners. You know, that is big time. So I think the Eagles team it's gonna be it's gonna be explosive. It's an, it's just the way I, I view it. Uh, so that's why the Eagles are at two. Number three is gonna be San Francisco 49ers. It's gonna to be tough to repeat, but if you look at this team, the way the roster is put together, uh, and two first-round draft picks too, and we'll see what they do with those. Uh, there's really no reason why they shouldn't be able to repeat. Uh, it's a very well-coached team, very good system. 
uh, you know, you look at the defense, the defense again to repeat something that's going to be tough, but it very well can do it. You know, Nick Bosa, first year. D Ford, first year on the Niners. Ark Armstead, first breakout year, can continue to get better, really fits this this newer defense. Um, you know, and there's young talent everywhere here. Uh, you know, a lot of guys were hurt last year too, and there are some guys that have the, unfortunately, can get hurt, so I guess it could happen again, but you could make the case those guys stay healthier, they stay healthier as a team, they could be even better. Uh, so I got the Niners at three right now, see what they do with those first round picks they got in the draft, that's pretty uh, exciting when you have two first round picks. Uh, the fourth seed is the Bears, which when I did my division by division predictions, I got ripped big time for having the Bears win the division. Uh, bottom line is the Bears got a lot better. I, I think the rest of the NFC, the Lions maybe got slightly better, uh, but the other two NFC North teams I think got worse as of now. They still have the draft to come. Um, you, you know, the Packers have been good at finding new talent, and the Vikings have two first round picks, so we'll see what happens after the draft. But the Bears got a lot better, and this is my problem with people ripping me for the Bears. Like, so many people. This is my problem. We back up to last year. Back up to last year, I didn't predict the Bears to win the division last year, and I got absolutely ripped. And the reasoning was, look at what they did last year. You know, how could you predict them not to win this division? They dominated the division last year, is what people were saying. So you're basing too much off last year. And here we are this year where the Bears were not good, and I'm predicting them to be good. You're basing too much off last year. Everyone does that everywhere. Uh, not everything repeats. So I'd say that, that my, is, is my reply to that. I also don't know how you can sit here and say they didn't get better. Even if you don't like Nick Foles and you don't believe in Nick Foles, he 100% gets them better. Uh, it makes Matt Nagy better. I think that's the main thing for me. It makes Matt Nagy better. The guy was limited in his play calling because he had to be. No man wants to run that many screens. I keep saying that. It's a fact. Uh, so it makes the whole offense better, and that defense is already good enough, but they what they were lacking was some pass rush help uh, opposite of Khalil Mack. And don't forget, Akeem Hicks, who is one of the more dominant defensive tack- tackles in all of football, was out too. They had Robert Quinn to help. You know, Even if he's not anything spectacular, kind of going like Nick Foles. Like even, if, even if you don't believe in Nick Foles and you're convinced he's not going to play good, still makes them better. If you're not believing in Robert Quinn a whole bunch, he still makes them better. Um, so... You know, the only downside is they're not going to help themselves a whole bunch. They do have two second-round picks, so I shouldn't say that. They don't have a ton of picks, but two second-round picks actually could help them. Um, I, right now, as we say, I think the Bears are the best team in the NFC North. That's just my take. I think too many people are – two things. Too many people are basing things off last year, which is wrong. You can base a little bit, you know, kind of like the Niners. Yeah, I'm basing some things off last year because they're really good, and I'm still basing off of that because they're still really good. They're young. They're going to continue to get better. It just still feels like a new team. Uh, they also had injuries. I explained it all. So that to me, that makes sense. Um, but, yeah, and another reason, you know, I think people are too much you're basing too much off, uh, yeah, Nick Foles' play last year, played week one, came back, was hurt, bad team, bad play calling. I don't know why you're basing things off that. Totally different system with Matt Nagy and the Bears. Uh, number five is going to be the Saints for me. Weird seeing the Saints at five because uh, really the best two teams are, are the Buccaneers and the Saints, in my opinion, uh, one and two. But uh, the Buccaneers and the Saints are in the same division. Uh, you know, the only downside with the Saints, I talked about this with the Chiefs maybe a little bit in the AFC video. Yeah, it, it always, you know, it always kind of it sucks a little bit when a team stays almost the same which they definitely can get better in the draft here and they did add Emmanuel Sanders but uh, at the same time it's been the Saints same Saints team for quite some time and uh, time now and teams just still struggle to stop them um so you know it's still going to be a damn good team like I said I'm viewing them as the second best overall team in the NFC right now but the same division as the Buccaneers um you know I want that defense to stay healthy for the most part so that's something that can kind of make them better by default um, you know, we've seen, seen guys like Davenport and Rankins get hurt. Hopefully those guys can stay healthy, um, you, know, you know, so. But overall, yeah, Saints, really good team. Definitely going to be contending like like usual. Uh, and then six is the Seahawks. Seahawks, I expected to be a little better at this point through free agency with the amount of cap space they had. Uh, you know, at record at the time of recording this, they didn't re-sign Clowney or anything. They very well could do that. Uh, I know Everson Griffin. I predicted them to get Everson Griffin. We'll see if they do that. Uh, but right now, I expected them to be a little better than where they are right now, if that makes sense. They're not thin on cap space. You know, no Clowney right now, no Quentin Jefferson. 
Um, you know, so but still a very good team when you have Russell Wilson, you definitely can contend. But I expected to be having the Seahawks at that one seed. Really. I expected to be for free agency. If you remember I did a video top tier contenders for next year, Seahawks were at the top of that for the NFC teams. And that's because I was kind of predict that was a it might have been two months ago, really. Um, I was kind of predicting the Seahawks to do a little more in free agency, maybe get Clowney back and have a big time addition with that. Um, so to be, to be determined still, we have the draft coming up. They haven't been too successful on their first round picks. Let's see if they can figure it out. Um, I'm a believer still in that front office, but they got to get some things done. Uh, so they're number six right now, but definitely a team, one of those teams that easily, but you know, next time I'm predicting these, maybe a month and a half away, Seahawks could be at one. It's realistic. Uh, and number seven is going to be the Green Bay Packers, who won the NFC North last year, and now I have the Bears jumping them a little bit. Packers feel like you know right around the same team, minus Brian Balaga, which was a you know big piece of letting Rodgers get out to the right side. So we'll see how it works with Rick Wagner. Um, really improved the defense last year. The defense, the defense was the reason they were as good as they were. Yeah, the, the offense stayed healthy. Uh, they made plays. You know, Aaron Jones was fantastic. Rodgers was still clutch. You know, he had his moments where, you know, it didn't feel like Rodgers, but he was still clutch and got them to where they needed to be. But mainly it was the defense, you know, and what they added there. And I expected a little more to happen. It has not happened. Pretty much replaced Martinez with Kirksey. Uh, they still have holes in the D-line. Uh, you know, they got a good young secondary. Uh, that, that Well, yeah, having that young of a secondary, too, is a good thing. But uh, and I'm a big fan of that pass rush. That pass rush is going to continue to play like that. It's not one of those things where – um, you know, it's not, I hate, I hate when people see yeah, guys have breakout years at area Smith, Preston Smith, you know, it's people will say they it'd be hard to repeat that. Maybe it's hard to repeat it, but I don't see any reason why not, you know, especially a guy like Zaria Smith. Uh, so that can be big time for them. It just kind of feels like the same, the same team right now. And I expect it to be a, a little better, but we have the draft coming up. Of course, we still have some free agents left. Um, you know, I just think the bears took more of that next step as of now. Um, again, the schedules even. That's, that's that might be bigger than the draft. The schedules really matter. So we'll see what happens with that. Really, these are the only seven teams that I, you know, I thought these were the clear seven for me at this moment, at this way too early moment. Um, yeah, it, it's it's the Cardinals could be a sneaky team. It felt like the Cowboys got got a little worse uh, this uh, this off season. Um, you know, the Vikings lost some players. Uh, still got some talent though, but it just felt like. Uh, you know, and the Falcons could be sneaky, of course. It just felt like these were the, the seven teams. It's just, just what it feels like right now. The AFC, different story. I had a really tough debate in my own head with a team that I left out, which I talked about in that AFC video. Um, oh, and then we'll reveal who I have. I mean, it should be, you know, right now my one seed should be the top. But, yeah, uh, Buccaneers, I, I like this team all the way through. People get mad saying I'm overreacting over Brady. I don't think there's, I don't think that should be in the same sentence. Honestly, you're overreacting because they added Tom Brady, but and it's it's false anyways because I like the entire team. Um, I I really do. I like where the defense is heading. It's just the major improvements it's made. It went, you know, it, it's just it, in Bruce Arians in his second year. Um, everyone's got to do the draft right. If a team, you know, hits the draft, you know, the wrong way and it happens, you know, then I may come down on the team a little bit. You know, I. I Stand by all my player evaluations, the roster evaluations, but mainly yeah, the draft prospect evaluations. So, uh, you know that you know will make be in effect on on some of these. So things definitely can change in the future. We can give get uh, some of the other guys on the goat house their predictions, so you kind of can see. That's always fun. You can kind of see everybody's and compare them. Um, so let me know your guys' thoughts. Please like the video, subscribe to both of our channels, follow us on Twitter, check out our podcast. Link down below for everything you need. Uh, that's going to do it for this one, though. A bunch of live streams on the way, live during the NFL Draft. Hopefully you can join us for that. Thanks for watching this video. Goodbye.